Daniel here for Tabletop for One and my top 10 reasons to not buy an expansion. Now we live in this great age of board gaming when there are Kickstarters that come with these all-ins with so many expansions where we have living card games that you can keep expanding, ad infinitum, and all sorts of ways to uh, spend our money on the games we have. But I'm gonna offer you today 10 reasons not to buy an expansion for your games. Now it should go without saying that you should always research an expansion before you buy it. And of course, if you have disposable income and a plenty of space, some of these uh, reasons will not resonate with you. However, I think most of you are in the same boat as me as where I have to consider a lot of things when I buy an expansion. And so onto the list, the number 10 reason not to back an expansion is because it may not be designed by the same designer as the main game. Or let me qualify that and say it may be designed with a team of designers that includes the main designer, but it may still be, be very well different than the spirit of the game that it was originally designed. And so the first game that comes to mind is a game called Caverna. Now Caverna has two expansions, and this is the, uh, the Frantic Fiends expansion. And so the Frantic Fiends expansion, while I personally enjoy it myself, I had to realize the fact that it's designed, yes, by Uwe Rosenberg, but it's got a team of designers that put a spin on it differently than I think a lot of people expected. And so it's at, you know one of his lowest rank expansions. I think it's below a seven on Board Game Geek. And a lot of people say just skip it entirely. And so I think if I had done a little more research and realized that it's not designed solely by Uwe Rosenberg, who I, I highly recommend as a designer, then I might have not picked up this expansion and been okay without it. Granted, I still enjoy it. It's just not what you expect when you expect a, an Uwe Rosenberg design. And so this happens every now and then where a publisher will have an expansion designed by somebody else other than the main designer and, and sometimes not even endorsed by the main designer. And so we'll go on to number nine. And number nine is you're not missing out. Really, you're not missing out on an expansion. See, if you enjoy the base game and you've played the base game, you may not need to expand it at all. But what the uh, companies will ha try and tell you is that you got to get this now or you're, or you're going to miss out. It's got all these flashy new things. It's going to give you all these extra, you know, characters or components or whatever. It's going to expand your gameplay, but you may not even have an experience the game. We'll talk about that later. But I want to tell you, don't buy into the fact that you are missing out if you don't order this expansion that nobody has ever played, <laughs> you know? So be wary of that. And one of the big companies that does that is Come On Games. Now, bear in mind, I love Come On Games. I have Bloodborne, I have uh, Marvel United, and I have uh, several others. I love Come On Games. I love the, the content that they give you. But what they will tell you is that you're going to miss out if you don't buy this edition. See, the Kickstarter edition of Marvel United X-Men came with some extra characters. Came with the, the extra bosses and I think an extra Storm character. And it, so if you didn't buy it or you know order it with the Kickstarter, you would miss out on those characters. You'd still get everything else that came with the game, but you would miss out on those characters. And so... That's what, you know, that's part of the exclusive content. Again, I'll go into exclusive content more in detail, but the publishers will prey on that, you know, limited quantities. You got to order it now or it's going to sell out. This game is hot, you know, whatever it is, they're going to try and tell you, you are missing out. And so don't buy into that. Uh, you know, just don't look at that. Don't let the publishers tell you that that's the reason to buy the expansion because really they're just trying to get you to spend money. You know, it has nothing to do with whether it fulfills some sort of need or desire or, you know, prevents you from missing out. That's, th that's what they're preying on, but really, uh, they're just trying to make money. So don't fall into that trap. And with that, let's go on to number eight. Now, when you buy an expansion, sometimes it won't fit in the box. And that may be a problem, especially if you have a finite amount of space in your, you know, your board game area. I'm coming up to that point where I'm at critical mass. I've had to ha find space in my collection for the board games that I've received because I've run out of space. And so one of the games that notoriously does that is Clinic. Look at all this. 
This is clinic expansions one, two, three, four, and five, and six, maybe. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how many I have at this point. I had to condense them down, but even then, I've got some of the expansions in the main box, some of the expansions in the first extension, and some of the expansions in the second extension. There's just not enough room, and these boxes are full to the max. Like, you can't press down on this lid because it's full to the lid. And so, unfortunately, there's just so much content and uh, we'll get to like actually being able to play all that content uh, in another uh, point later. But the fact that I can't fit all this in this expansion or even in the main box means that this is taking up that much sh shelf space, which is shelf space for other games that I could be buying instead. And so you really have to take into consideration, will it actually fit in the main box? And I have to tell you, buying a new big box from the publisher to fit everything is not a solution. Yes, it keeps it organized, it keeps it all in one place, but it doesn't give you any more space and likely gives you even less space. <laughs> so, you know, do bear in mind that not all expansions fit in the box, so do your research and make sure that they do. But yeah, Clinic is one example, Marvel United is another example, so is Caverna. You know, the Caverna stuff doesn't fit in the box either. And so, yeah, that, that's a lot of space that you're not gonna get back because it just takes up that much space. So do bear that in mind, keep it into consideration when you're buying an expansion. And you know, maybe it's just not worth it to buy that expansion because it won't fit. All right, and so we're moving on to number seven. And number seven is be aware that some expansions add complexity to the game. Now, Teo Teo Walk-In, the expansion for it, it fits in the box, so thankfully. Actually, multiple expansions will fit in this box. But fitting it in the box is not the issue. It's whether it extends the complexity of the game, makes it more complicated, makes it take more time to play the game, and that may be an issue for you. It often is an issue for me. I don't like it when expansions make games more complex. It, it just often means, like I said, it takes more time to play the game, it means additional rules that you have to cover. Sometimes it's just too much. And so, you know, there have been times where I bought an expansion because I didn't do the research to find out that it adds complexity only to not play with that expansion. Just because it, yeah, it just adds too much to it. While an expansion may sound cool, may sound fun, it has more content, it may just take up too much of your extra brain power to play the game and you may lose enjoyment of the game. All right, so for number six, we're gonna talk about how expansions are more of the same, and that can be good or bad. So you do have to keep in mind that a lot of expansions only extend the content, but really the content is adjacent content, meaning that it's similar content to what you already have. Is it enough, is it more than enough to be different that you enjoy it more, that it expands your replayability, or is it replayability for the sake of replayability? And so a big one on that is uh, Sleeping Gods. You know, Sleeping Gods is a great game. I, I love this game. Uh, I've, I've played it quite a bit. And I played solo, so I operate all nine characters. I know some people don't like operating all nine characters, but I do, I, I enjoy this game. And there's a lot of content in the main box, and, uh, but I did get it with the expansions. You see, there's an expansion for the dungeons. And look, it's still in shrink. You know why? Because it's more of the same. Yes, it's a little kind of different way to do the, uh, you know, the content because you're in dungeons instead of the overworld kind of thing. And there's little dungeon maps that you use uh, to uh, explore and everything. Sorry, I'm <laughs> knocking everything over. Pop Lulu needs to do his job here. All right. So do bear in mind that, yes, it is different content in some ways, but it's still more of the same. You're still going for the totems. There's still enemies you fight and, and keywords you find and that sort of thing. So I haven't yet opened this because, you know, it's just more of the same. And I'm still exploring that already in Sleeping Gods. I haven't got all the totems in the original box. And I could add this in and just have it as an alternate way to grab totems. But again, that's more content of the same. Now, do I love Sleeping Gods and do I want more content of the same? Yes. That is true. And thankfully, this wasn't too expensive of an expansion. But that may not be for you, and you have to keep that in mind. Is more of the same good for you or not? Just bear in mind that some expansions, that's what they are, more of the same. 
So you really have to weigh those options. So again, doing your research here is gonna help. All right, and so we're halfway through, and so the next one I wanna talk about is expansions can cost as much as a new game. And so you ha have to weigh that decision because maybe expanding a game, whether you love it or not, it may not be worth expanding it because of the cost. And you might as well buy a new game if you're looking for a different experience. And so one of the games that's you know, a big offender in that is Marvel Champions. You see, you can buy character packs and I own everything of Marvel Champions up to this point except the latest uh, Deadpool character expansion. So I need to order that one. <laughs> uh, but Marvel Champions, I don't know if you can see the price tags here, but this is from my local game shop that I picked these up because I like to support my local game shop. Uh, Gabby's Olympic Card and Comics is such a fantastic shop. Just putting a shout out there. Gabby's a wonderful person, a pillar of the community. She provides an inclusive space and it's, it's just an excellent place to be. So I don't mind paying the premium to support her every now and then. And uh, the premium on this is $17 a pack right now. Two together, that's $34. You could buy a game for that. You, you really could. And so, yeah, th this is a bit of a, you know, bit of a cost here to buy two characters. Now, how many characters do I have? I have all of them, which means I have dozens of characters. And have I played them all? No, I haven't. Well, obviously, I haven't even opened these. Uh, so I haven't played all these characters. And so, you know, you have to realize, is it worth spending that money to just have it sit there? and you know, maybe get to it eventually. Now, now Gambit's one of my favorite X-Men, so I mean, <laughs> I'm gonna play Gambit, but it's been sitting there for a month or so, and it hasn't been played. Could I have bought a, a different game and maybe, you know, use that instead? Of course, maybe that would go unplayed as well. But just realize that if you're wanting a different experience, then maybe buying a different game is the answer to that instead of adding more of the same. So a lot of these points kind of run together, you know, but just, just be aware that the, you, you could have the option of buying a whole nother game. All right, so with this next point, I'm gonna ruffle some feathers here. <laughs> so the next point here is number four, the, the expansion is not an essential. Okay, people will tell you sometimes that an expansion is essential. And the biggest offender of that is terraforming Mars. You see, people will tell you that you should not buy this game unless you get the Prelude expansion with it. All right, so there's a couple things I'm gonna say to that. I don't think that Prelude is essential. I rarely use Prelude. I own it and I rarely use it. I bought it because people said it was essential. It jump starts the game, but I enjoy that process of building my engine. So I don't use it. I, I think I've used it probably 5% of my total plays and I've played this game 100 times. So yeah, I just don't use it. But on top of that, if an expansion is essential, you have to ask the question, why wasn't it included in the game? You know, it should be included in the base game if it's essential to make the game work. Or if a game is broken, not Terraforming Mars is not broken, but if a game is broken and requires an expansion to fix it, so is it worth giving them more money to fix a game that should have already been, you know, ready to go with the base game? And I'm telling you, no, don't do it. Just stay away from it because you don't need to give the publisher more money if their game isn't already self-contained, good to go. It shouldn't have an essential expansion. But in the case of Terraforming Mars, I'm sorry, Prelude is not essential. If it was, it should have been included. And if it is, like if you can objectively say it is, you shouldn't even buy this game then because it should be included with the game. You shouldn't be giving more money to the publisher to make their game work. So definitely be aware of people saying that expansions are essential to a game, then avoid the game. You know, don't buy the game. <laughs> I, I say that as Terraforming Mars is my number four favorite game of all time. If you think that Prelude is essential for it, then don't buy this game because I, I, I don't think that you should spend extra money on it to make it work. All right, so for number three, we're going back to the Kickstarter idea of exclusive content. See, on Kickstarter, there's tons of exclusive content. Sometimes at convention, there's exclusive content that you can get. And a big offender again for that is Come On Games. And I'm bringing up Marvel United once again. Now this is the stretch goals, <laughs> all right? This is the stretch goal box. It contains, I don't know, I, I don't know how many miniatures. Just look at the back of this box here. There's that many miniatures in it, okay? 
This is all exclusive content, exclusive stretch goal stuff that you can only get if you head back the game or you buy it in the secondary market, which I'll come to in a minute. Now here's the thing. If it's exclusive, then it's not essential. And if it's not essential, then you don't need it. Now, do I like this? Yes. I very much like having this content, but the cost of it is huge. Now, if you don't know Kaman, they have a Kickstarter going on right now for uh, DC Zombicide, the deceased is what it's called. And I'm not backing it right now. I'm not backing any Kickstarters right now, but deceased is $130 for the base game. And it's going to be almost $100 to ship the game. Do you know why? It's because, well, yes, shipping costs have gone up, but come on, charges you for their stretch goal stuff in the shipping cost. Now they don't say that, but I'm telling you, there's no other reason for the shipping cost to be as high as it is because they give you a big box like this of extra content that's stretch goals, that's exclusive, that they're gonna charge you for it. And so it doubles the cost of the pledge basically. So instead of $130, you're going to pay paying over $200 for the base pledge to get all these stretch goals. And like I said, it might be worth it, but just be aware that this stuff isn't essential it, and it shouldn't be. It really shouldn't be. What you get with the base game should be enough to enjoy the whole experience. So if it's exclusive, it's not essential. If it's not essential, don't get it and don't fear missing out. Really, if you want it later, you can always buy it in the secondary market. It might cost a little extra, but it'll be better to have played the game to know if you want that. And we'll talk about you know, whether you've played the game in later on. So yeah, I, I don't recommend going down this road of buying exclusive content just because it's, it's exclusive. All right, we're at number two, and this one's gonna be different. See, I'm gonna tell you, make your own expansion content for your games. And you'll be like, no, I, I can't do that. Yeah, you can. You can make your own content. One of the easiest ways is to make scenarios for your games. Just make special goals that you have to accomplish during your game that will change every time you play the game and that'll provide a challenging experience. You know, there are plenty of times that publishers will publish scenarios in some sort of expansion box that you have to buy in order to get them. One of those is Empires of the North. They published an expansion, you know, a campaign mode, Turns out, it, I hear it wasn't that great, but they published one that you had to buy to get that expansion. Here's the thing, make your own. You can make your own scenarios, but one big one that you can do is you can make it your own for Tesseract. Now, bear in mind, this is a review copy of the game, all right? So bear in mind my opinion of this game, which is very high, is biased by the fact that I received a review copy. But in Tesseract, I talked about in my first impressions that you should expand this game or the publisher should expand this game. However, you can do it on your own. See, the way I talked about making an expansion for Tesseract is you change the containment cube board to a different layout. Maybe have some priorities or change what numbers are gonna be used for containment. Maybe it's not one through six of every color. Maybe it's you've got to go th through this path of containment in order to contain the cubes. You can't, you have to uh, contain them in a specific order rather than a freeform order. You could make that on Google Sheets, on an Excel spreadsheet. It doesn't even have to be, you know, any fancy graphics. You could just make a bunch of cubes in a grid order, uh, however you want, on Excel and put numbers in them to indicate what number value of the cubes to accomplish and do it that way. It's free, it really is. It's just gonna be the cost of your time, which shouldn't be much, and the cost of printing it out. And assuming you have a printer, that's not gonna cost much, or if you have to go to a local printer and we're talking 25 cents. You know, that is a way to not only save money, but be able to do it yourself, and it's very creative. On top of that, it's something to be proud of, and then you can publish it on BGG and share it with the community because you know, our community is a community of great people who uh, contribute to the community. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people who make fan-made automas. There's some people who make fan-made content. Uh, one of them is uh, Andrew Platt. He makes pro player aids for a lot of the games. And I think he's done one for Nucleum. Some of the other games like Taiwan and Suyu maybe, I'm not sure, but he's done some for a lot of the games where he does these solo player aids that are very helpful to the solo community. You could be that kind of person that does that. And I, I highly encourage you to do so. Save your money on buying expansions, make your own expansions, and share it with everybody else so everybody can enjoy in that. And we all share in the enjoyment together. 
All right, so I, I kind of went off on a rabbit trail there. Let's come on back to buying an expansion or not buying an expansion. All right, so now we're gonna talk about the number one reason not to buy an expansion. You haven't played the base game or you haven't played it enough. See, I have Warfighter, Warfighter World War II. Let's see where I can put it here. I'm, <laughs> I'm running out of room here. All right, I have Warfighter World War II here and I did a tutorial solo playthrough for it, but here's the thing. I haven't even touched the majority of the expansions. See, look at all these expansions. These are decks of cards, all right? Of locations, missions, objectives, soldiers, items, equipment, all sorts of things that I have not touched. I have even more of these that are still wrapped up that are used for this warfighter and for the Mediterranean warfighter. And I just haven't touched them. I haven't had the time. And here's the fact that like, this is just money sitting there, not, not being used. Will I get to them? Yes. But here's the fact, did I need to buy them ahead of time? Probably not, because I haven't played the base game enough to even cover all the base game content. And so I have expansions here that I'm not using. That's just taking up space. They won't even fit in the main box. For goodness sake, you need this big old Warfighter chest box to fit all the stuff together. And so you're talking about taking up even more space for content that you may not get to in a very long time. And now Warfighter World War II is my number two favorite game of all time and I should be playing it more often. But the fact is, is I do this time for this channel and I spend a lot of time on the channel that I don't play the games I wanna play all the time. So, you know, just be wary of buying expansions for games you haven't played yet or played through enough. And that goes for Kickstarters because Kickstarters want you to go with the all-in. They want you to buy the expansions. They want you to buy the Kickstarter exclusives. They want you to get all this extra stuff. They want you to spend $400 or even $1,000. I saw there was a $1,000 pledge for something. I even think that the uh, the new Teneris Adventures pledge, which I didn't back the latest Teneris, by the way. You know, I, I decided to skip the extra content and the new rule books and all that stuff. I, I skipped it, even though Tenere's Adventures is my number one favorite dungeon crawler. Uh, so, you know, I just realized that I have enough stuff. I have enough content. I don't need to add more to it. But yeah, that Tenere's Adventures, the all-in, is $1,000. Goodness gracious, $1,000. You don't need to spend that money on it. Really. Buy the gameplay version, you know? I'm going to be talking about Stars of Icarius later this week because I've been previewing it on Tabletop Simulator. And I'm going to recommend that you just buy the gameplay version of it. It looks and plays like an absolutely fun game. But if you don't, you know, if you haven't played the base game, then only buy the base game gameplay version of it. Not even the miniatures. Just go with the base level because you don't need all that extra content. I don't need all that extra content. Sorry, I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I'm just trying to be, you know, help you be aware of falling into that trap of buying expansions for games you haven't played and don't even know if you like. You know, just wait. Take your time. There's the other time to get it. Yes, sometimes things go out of print, but there's always a secondary market. And if you look hard, you can find other ways to buy it. Now, some of you who do live in other countries, that may not be an option, and I get it, and you, you just have to make that decision for yourself, you know. Of course, weighing the options and weighing the scarcity of it, because I know that sometimes it's not easy to get board games where you live. But for the rest of us who have those opportunities to buy them in at any time, take that time. Make sure you enjoy the base game. Make sure that it's something you want to invest in. Make sure that you really want to spend extra time, extra space, extra money, extra everything to get those extra expansions, especially since you may not play them. And so there you go. That was my top 10 reasons not to buy an expansion. Again, I'm not trying to tell you what to do. You do whatever you'd like to do with your money and your time and space. I just hope that I gave you some good ideas, though, different ways to think about when you buy an expansion and whether or not it's a good idea. I'm not a good example of that. I bought expansions that I have not played that sit on the shelf for months and I don't know when I'm gonna get to them. So I'm not a good example of that. And I, I really should play the, the games more often or buy less expansions. That's just the way I should. And that's kind of why I stopped backing Kickstarters. I'm gonna talk about that in a later video, but I'm not backing Kickstarters anymore. There's just too much that I have coming in and I have too many games to play and not enough time. But that's for a video for another time. 
Let me know in the comments below how wrong I am about buying expansions. Uh, let me know. I'm so glad you joined me tonight, and I thank you very much for watching Tabletop for One, and have a great night. <laughs>